Okay, James, we love my parts, my beauty supply. Check us out, great stuff over here. Subscribe to us, we'd really appreciate that. 12 part series, we've already done the first three parts. Now we're gonna talk about the A locus, the agouti locus, the agouti locus. And uh, I don't know why it says agouti, it's probably a French word, French bulldog, I don't know, agouti. But there are three, so on this particular gene, there are three possibilities. Those are in order, AY, AT, and A. So any dog, remember, all dogs get two copies, one from dad, one from mum, that make up the A locus. So what are the possibilities? Well, a dog can be AY, AY. AT, AT, oops, AT, AT, ah, AT, AT, or AA, right? Or any other combination. It could be AY, AT, it could be AY, A. This one here could be AT, AT, which you already did, or it could be ATA, ATA. And this one here, we've, so we've got all the possible combinations that you could have on the board now. If you think about how many different combinations there are of those, they're all there on the board. Okay, so I need a paper towel. There it is right there, just clean this off a little bit. Getting a bit messy. Let's just get those off. Okay, so these have a pecking order to them. The, the they're, they, um, this one trumps, this one trumps, this one. So, if you get an AY, AY dog, that basically is gonna be a fawn dog. If you get an ATAY dog, it's still a fawn dog. But it's likely to show what we call sable. If you end up with an AY, AT, the AT shows up a little bit and you end up with some sables, a sable dog, where it has different variations of color throughout the hair. If you have an ATAT dog, that's tan points. So ATAT is tan points. If you have an ATA, the A is recessive to this. It's not shown, it's still 10 points. That still gets you 10 points. Now, it's interesting because you can tell a difference typically in a 10 pointed dog that is ATAT versus a 10 pointed dog that is ATA. This tends to be a lighter color, this tends to be more of an orange color. Then the A gene, the only way you get the A gene expressed is if you get a dog that's AA, which makes for a double recessive solid coat color. So if all of these now are controlled by some other genes. So the first one is the brindle gene, KB, or sometimes it's shown KBR, but the KB, the brindle gene, affects all of this. The K, KB, the K gene, if it's present, it's either that or it's this. Sometimes it's written as KN, not there. If you've got a dog that has one copy of KB, it stops all this stuff from showing up. It makes for a brindle dog. So a, a dog that has a copy of KB will not show tan points, will not show sable, and won't be double recessive. Then another gene that can affect this, if you have a dog that's a cream dog, cream dog is like white paint, it covers everything up, all of this stuff is masked, you don't see any of it at all, it's just a cream dog. Okay. Um, and interestingly, if you have a dog that has a single copy of cream, so that would be a dog that is not cream, but has one copy of the recessive cream gene, it makes the tan points show up brighter. So you can, if you see a dog that's like a blue and tan or a chocolate and tan or a lilac and tan, and it's got really white tan points on its legs, on its face, then there's a good chance it's carrying a copy, a single copy of cream, which makes it pop much better. So that's a really a nice, if you're trying to produce tan pointed dogs, what you'd like to see is either an AT, AT dog that has one copy of cream, or an ATA dog that has one copy of cream. That makes for a nice, especially that one, makes for really nice clear tan points. So that is, in my opinion, um, something to go for um, if you're looking for a tan point dog. If you don't want a tan point dog, you better not have an AT gene present, or you better cover it in cream, or you better make it brindle, otherwise it's gonna show up. Um, okay. So let's talk, this is an interesting one, the recessive, the recessive black. So there's two ways you can get black. 
you can get a black dog that's a, a brindle dog that will not be a solid black. It'll be mostly black. And, and brindle's a funny thing. Uh, and we get to talk about brindle um, later on. I don't even have it on the board. That's going to be another thing all by itself. We, can, we just added a video. <laughs> another video because it's Unlucky 13 coming up. Brindle is... Um, is uh, um, it, Brindle shows up, it's a dominant gene, a single copy shows up, and it's so weird on the way it shows up. You could have a dog with a single copy of Brindle and you can't see it. There's just a tiny little bit of Brindling somewhere and you have a hard time finding it. Typically in those situations, it's on the haunches. Or you have a dog with a single copy of Brindle and it looks like a tiger. You've got these really pretty reverse Brindles where you've got black with a fawn stripes in it and it looks like a tiger. It's a very pretty combination. Um, but the brindle gene basically wipes all this out when none of this shows up. So if, the, if you've got brindle present, all of this stuff goes out the window. So what is a double A dog? Well, if you have a double A dog that doesn't have blue, doesn't have two copies of blue, it is not chocolate and it's not blue, it's not that, then that would be a black dog. <clears throat> If you had a dog that is ATAT -AT or ATA and it doesn't have either the blue or the chocolate, it's not a blue dog or a, or a, or a blue dog or a chocolate dog, that would be a black and tan. That would be a black and tan. Um, okay. So that's how you get a black and tan. I think I've probably covered this fairly well. Um, so now I think we're going to move on to uh, the pie gene next. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe to us if you like it. Bye, everybody.